All right, hello folks, Dee Dee here. I am doing a series of videos for Donna Downey Studios and the Artist Gang. They are like product kind of exploration videos. I did one series on Cray Paws Oil Pastels by Sakura of America, and then I'm doing another series on these art rollers. And these are like, think of like a paint roller that you would roll on the wall. However, they are like a giant rolling stamp and or um, a like a concrete roller. Have you ever seen those? Like they lay out a slab of concrete and then they roll a pattern over it. So it's a much smaller version of that or a much larger version of a rolling stamp. And they are awesome. Super, 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 super awesome. So I have five videos for you. They're all going to be on these little miniature wooden um, canvas boards. That I mean, they're wooden boards, birch boards. Uh, it, and they're about two inches thick or an inch and a half or two inches thick. And then I'm sort of making like a little mini series. So I'm just going to try to limit my color palette and kind of play with some techniques. The first one here, I feel like it's a little bit um, standard or maybe like kind of not so far out of the box, but the thickness of these stamps is so intense that I felt like I couldn't not do this. So what I've done is I've laid on a very thick layer of modeling paste. Now the modeling paste that I use is by Blick Art Materials. And the reason that I use this one, um, and I've tried all kinds, I've tried Golden and Liquitex, and they're all very cool. They all do very similar things. And each of them definitely has a place depending on what you're doing. Some of them are stiffer than others. Some of them are specifically flexible. Some of them have texture. The one that I am using in this, the when it finished, when it's finished drying, it's very plaster-like. It has a very smooth, almost porcelain feel. Not like fired or glazed porcelain, but like just like dry. Like it's very cool, very plastery. So what I did was I laid on a very thick layer of that, almost like cake frosting, and then I dried the top layer, and then I rolled my my giant roller through it. This is the reptile one. I rolled my giant reptile roller through it while the meat while the modeling paste was still wet on the inside you'll see that my under paper has kind of changed when I flipped over to this new video which is after I had let the uh, modeling paste dry for a very long time I wanted this to be very dry when I moved on the reason that the under paper is different is because I went to another video so you'll see how that under paper is made all kind of crazy wacky like that sorry if that's confusing continuity issues I know but I had to put my project to the side and let it dry. So it dried, and then now I am putting an acrylic wash over it. This is the Amsterdam paint, and the reason I'm using this paint versus a different one is because I really like to jelly print with this plate, and I did some jelly printing. You'll see that in the next video, and uh, so I'm keeping my color palette the same, and I ended up making a really cool little mini series, so it's kind of exciting. I really enjoy how it turned out. Um, and right now I'm just playing with acrylics and I'm layering them up on top of this modeling paste and adding some water and kind of getting some fluidity to them. And Because this is a heavy body paint, but I wanted it to seep down into the cracks and crevices and cool areas. Then this gold, this is the, um, the Dina Wakely gold. And I thought that I wanted to put it on here. So after everything was dry, I kind of started scraping it on in some areas and I'm looking at it and I'm looking at it and I'm not liking it. Like right away, I am really not liking it. I don't like how it's turning out. So then I, I get it wet and I try to wipe it off, but because I had scraped it on and the paint was so thin and because that modeling paste I mentioned earlier is very plastery, so it has a lot of pore, um, porousness to it. It, it, it really like sucks the moisture out of stuff. So it sucked the moisture right out of that paint and that paint dried right away. So then I had to come in with some gesso. It's okay. I can, we can fix it. I can fix it. Never lose hope. I do have a friend that says if it's ugly, it's just because you're not finished yet. So just keep going. So I'm using some gesso. I'm covering up that gold that I have those funny little gold marks left there. I'm just sort of covering it up and do a couple layers of gesso because this is the Liquitex gesso. So it tends to be a little bit on the thin side. No problem at all. Just put a couple layers down, make sure they're completely dry, and then I'm going to come back in with some of that watered down acrylic again. And it's going to blend right in. 
super easy, super awesome. Now it looks like I never even messed anything up because I didn't. I didn't mess anything up. It's just now I know that there are two or three lovely little flecks of gold underneath there that uh, lend to the story, even if you can't read them. <laughs> no problem. I totally got this. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. When it happened, I was like, what did I just do? It was very, very traumatic. <laughs> just kind of playing around now. I'm trying to make sure that that um, gesso there, because I didn't have gesso on the rest of the board, it was that modeling paste. I'm just trying to make sure that that gesso is blending in well. And so this is after everything has dried. And I really set it aside. I knew I know that I'm doing lots of layers. And so I just want to make sure that each of them is completely dry before I move on, especially with that modeling paste. I don't want any moisture to get into it and wreck it. Like I don't want any of the modeling paste to peel up or anything like that. So as long as I can make sure my layers are completely dry before I move on, then that's really going to help the stability um, and the, like the sturdiness of my and the construction. How about that? The construction of my piece, because it is getting very dimensional and layered. Gosh. So then after everything has had time to completely dry, I am coming back in with some gesso now and I'm highlighting all of the textures that are in here. And it's no, um, excuse me. Uh, it is, it, how do I put this? Like I start with a very sheer layer and I kind of just go back and forth and I pick up some of the textures that I really like. And then because it's so thin, as I move from like one part of the canvas to the other, then the, then the first part where I was is drying very quickly. So I'm able to sort of just keep going until I get a look that I really like. And in this portion, I don't have to worry so much about all the layers being dry because they're so thin, they're drying very quickly. And then that's it for this canvas. So this one is really just highlighting that reptile pattern. That's the name of this art roller and the texture that it created in my modeling paste. It's very cool, very awesome. It's such a cool piece to have in this um, selection. So here are those close-up shots again. You can see all that beautiful texture that I created. I have videos two, three, four, and five coming up after this one, so check them out. Lots of fun stuff with art rollers. Check out my other series about Craypaw Oil Pastels by Secura of America, and Check out all the other videos. Donna Downey has, like, is a wealth of information, and she picks up other artists to help her explain things, and, and we all have really great um, outlooks and different uses for these tools, too. So see what's happening. Don't be afraid to ask questions, and I will see you around, guys. Thank you.